Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made, and of course, we are rejoicing and glad in it, praise God, not being moved by what we see or by what we feel, but only by what we believe, praise God. And what do we believe? We believe that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and he is King of Kings, praise God. My name is Apostle Alfred Craig, and I'm so excited to be with you today. I'm excited because Jesus is Lord. I'm excited that in spite of what we're going through, in spite of the things we're facing today, that Jesus is still on the throne. Praise God. He's just as much alive today as he was in the days of Galilee when he walked the shores of Galilee. Praise God. Jesus has not changed. Praise God. And so the devil may have uh, tried to make changes and make things look like it has changed, make things look like God is not as powerful as always has been. But you know what? Praise God. I remember the song that says, you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. Praise God. So welcome, welcome, welcome to our, our class today. Praise God. Again, uh, my name is Apostle Albert Craig, and I got some special things that I'll be sharing with you because God has given me a special assignment, and, and that is that he, uh, you know, uh, you know I, I've been passing for like over 47 years, praise God. And so about the last six years, God began to do some readjusting in my life, kind of refocusing for the next level that he has for me. And I guess for many of you also, praise God. And so uh, here in the last uh, year or two, God put in my heart uh, after pastoring in, in, in Phoenix for all, all those years, like almost 45 years just in Phoenix by itself. Well, about 43 years there in Phoenix, uh, you know, to, uh, I came aside and, and God began to speak to me about the office of the apostle and things like that. And then, you know, about a year or so ago, God began to put in my heart to go back to the state of Arizona and actually plant some more churches because that's what I've done. You know, plant many churches. I've trained a lot of students around, literally around the world, praise God, and with a special emphasis there in Arizona. So God has really put in my heart to go back to Arizona and establish some churches, praise God. And so that's what we're doing. So I'm going to be titling this, th these messages calling Catching the Vision, praise God, because I believe that many of you out there right now, you may be individuals that God is wanting to, to connect with me, whether you are individuals in the body of Christ, you know, and you said, Pastor, Pastor, I've been praying about my next move, about what God's got for me next, praise God, or you may be a pastor that said, you know, I've been looking for, you know, uh, you know an apostle to be under so that I can begin to connect and to go to my next level and things like that. Well, that's what I'm all about, praise God. I'm, I'm an apostle, uh, uh, to, you know, to the nations, praise God. And so many of you, praise God, may have been praying about that. You know, uh, 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 you know, I remember Apostle Price told us, he said, when I was in school with him, he said that, Anytime God raises up another church, it's always in response to someone's prayer. So in other words, God doesn't do anything just out of the clear blue sky because this person needs a job. <laughs> you follow me? Remember the individual, he says that I've heard the cry of my people. That's why God raised up Moses. Moses had been off, off, you know, off work, <laughs> off ministry, whatever you would call it, for 40 solid years. But God said, I heard the cry of my people. Therefore, I'm sending you. A year if I'm into Egypt, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. So I believe there's individuals in the state of Arizona that's been praying that kind of a prayer. God, we need help. A year if I'm so I'm really for you. Amen. Whether you are a pastor or whether you are members in the body of Christ, you know, and you're, and you're looking for your next uh, next level, uh, or wherever you are, some of you probably, got, probably throughout America. I know I'm getting calls from, you know, different uh, individuals from different states also. So, Pastor, I've been praying for people, someone like you. Well, that's who I'm for. You know, I'm, I'm for not to try to drag somebody out of someone else's ministry, but I'm for those who have been praying, God, we need help, or God, I need help, or God, I need direction, or God, I need to be connected. Those are the ones. Ones that I'm talking about. So I'm talking about catching the vision in that area. So let me give you the purpose of, of what we're doing here. Number one is we're here to launch a vision to plant and establish 50 churches that sweeps throughout the people and population of Arizona. And as I said, because, you know, our ministry expands around the world, there'll be others that will connect with me through uh, others of you who will connect with me throughout, throughout America and others of you throughout the world, and praise God. So, but, I, but that's what this lesson is going to be, because I'm going to give you an opportunity to understand the vision God has given you, the assignment God has given you. And if you hear God's voice, you know, that this is what God is calling you to do also, you want to connect, praise God, with this vision and become a part of my team. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. You are the one that I'm uh, looking for. The, object, the objective then is this, is to train and develop uh, a church launch team uh, uh, for launching, number one, two locations in Phoenix. First. That's where I'm going to start off at. Two locations in Phoenix, one in South Phoenix and one in West Phoenix, plus one online church, uh, one online church. 
And I plan on, I plan on doing that by January the 7th. 2024. That means uh, uh, until then, I'll be literally doing some training and preparing you for this major church line. So again, two locations in Phoenix, South location uh, uh, and, and, and West location, and also an online location where we have an online church. Many of you become members of my one hour church, you know, through, uh, you know, uh, through being online and things like that. So that's one thing we're going to open up to also because many of you, you know, you, you need that level of, you in, I'll say you've been praying about that level of ministry where you can connect with a church, praise God. Maybe you, you might be like a football. Some people like going to the stadium. Other people like going to stay at home watching on television. It's, it's called hybrid. Amen. <laughs> so the whole the goal is I'm out for you. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm out for those that have been praying, those that have been seeking God for the next level. You are the one that God is calling me to uh, and assigning me to help. Praise God. And, and so I believe that I'm an apostle of God and that I have your answer. Amen. From the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm looking at there. And so the goal is this. My goal is for the for the for the ones that we're going to uh, that's going to catch the vision both in Phoenix, both the South Phoenix, North Phoenix, plus online ministry. We're looking to be able to launch out with at least 350 team members at that time. You know, members of they say, Pastor, you know, you know, we're, we're connecting with the vision or different churches that are part of this. Praise God! But I'm looking to connect with at least 350 people on the on day one. And you said, Dr. Craig, how do you get that? Well, what what has happened is, you know, uh, when I when I, God first led me about six years ago to go to come to Las Vegas, I live in Las Vegas right now. Uh, you know, I, I, I was taking my car uh, to get, you know, I needed my car. I had a Mercedes. I was taking my car to get it worked on. And I was just looking through the phone book. And so I look at this one. I said, it says a Mercedes uh, repair shop. So I said, that looks, that sounds good. I know I, I knew my way around to Las Vegas at that time. And so I went there. And so as, as, the, as, as the salesperson was assisting me, you know, filling up paperwork, he said, well, where are you from? I said, well, I'm from Arizona. He said, why are you here? I said, I, I said well, I'm a pastor. I've been a pastor for all these years. And at that time, I thought God had sent me to actually start a church. And so he said, well, you know what? He says, if you're not doing anything on this particular date, we, we're, we're having a, what we call a church launch. And we're launching our church on this day. I, you know, he said, we'd like to invite you to come. He says, as a matter of fact, the gentleman that owns this particular uh, 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 a company here, he's a Christian. He might want to meet you. So he had the guy, the owner of the place come out and met me. So, you know what? I would like to see you, you know, come. I want to invite you personally to come and be a part of our church launch. I said, okay, we're not doing anything else. We're just in Las Vegas and doing Las Vegas. So with my wife and I, we went to the church. So this is the first, this is the first Sunday now. And, and, and they're having their first service in a high, in, 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 in a high school cafeteria. So I said, you know, it's, this is different, you know what I mean, high school cafeteria. Because many times we were just leased places. But they, they went in that morning at 6 a.m. And, 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 and totally converted that, that high school cafeteria into a church. Lighting, drums, the piano, I mean, uh, uh, you know, band, praise and worship team. And then on, when we first met, there was people on the outside with signs, praise God, welcome, welcome to our church. Said, this is amazing on the first day, all these people the first day. We, uh, they had two services the first day. The first service was at 9 a.m. We went to the 11 a.m. service, the second one. We had already been to another church already that morning. And so we get in there, and we got greeters at the door. We have ushers, and then there's 400 people in there on the first Sunday. Are you follow me? And I said, oh, my God, this is different. I can see you guys, you're leading me. What, what, you know, what's happening here? And, uh, and, 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 and it was like, you know, the church, the service was, you know, over in like, I think an hour and 10 minutes. I said, that was different because the church that I've been around, we've been doing two hours, two and a half hours. Are you follow me? So, so, you know, and so I, I called the pastor that week. I said, man, I, I like to understand, you know, you know what's going on? How, how did you do this? And he told me what I did. I took the time. I didn't just start a church. I, it, I launched the church, meaning that I took the time to build a team of people, you know, that, 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 would, that would believe in the visions that I had to establish a church here in Las Vegas. And we took the time to train them in those areas, in the vision, train them in, 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 in service, how to serve people, you know, you know, how to be a urge, how to be a greeter. We took the time to, you know, to build this and also to raise funds for this. So, this, so we actually launched the church. And so the first day where all the things they did, they literally had, uh, I mean, the second service was about 400, about, I, was, I, no, probably about 250, 300. And now on the first service, about over 100 and, and 202. So, I mean, it was over 400 people in the first service. I, I caught that. I said, God, this is amazing. How this, this is amazing. I never done. I, you know, I started church with these people, and, you know, and we just, you know, struggled, you know what I mean? But they took the time to launch it. And that's what I'm talking about right now. I'm looking at you that, 
They said, Dr. Craig, I'm catching this vision. I can, and as I talk this week, you'll be able to understand more about it. And I, and, and I want to work with you in this vision, whether you are a member uh, uh, in the body of Christ, whether you are a pastor. And you say, I want to connect with this kind of a vision and things, God, or whatever there. That's what I'm looking for. And that's what I believe God is raising me up specifically to do in the state of Arizona. But also many of you that are outside of Arizona that are connecting with me, you also will be a part of this in Jesus' name. So this is what God has put in my heart to do. And like I said, and then the second thing that I, that I did while I was here in, 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 in Las Vegas is that, you know, I, I went to, uh, you know, we, we was here a few Sundays. And so I would always, you know, uh, go back and forth to Phoenix and I would catch an Uber many times, my wife and I, you know, uh, to get back home on rather than parking our cars at the, at, the, uh, at the airport. So what happened was, you know, uh, the, 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 this one Uber driver, very nice guy, he ended up being a Christian guy. So we would start using him every time we would come, you know, you know at, on a personal level, start using him every time we would come and go, use him. So he, he did it also on the side. And he said, I would, whatever I would charge you Uber, I'd charge you the same thing. So it became real convenient for us. And so one day I said, you know what, you know, we'd like to just come visit your church. We ain't gonna win on this Sunday. We're just gonna come visit your church. So we went to the church, his church, and, and we get there and again people on the outside you know what I mean uh, they're, they're re real welcoming very excited you know what I mean and then we get there the, it was a first class you know youth service a first class children's ministry uh, you then you get into the sanctuary that they they're giving away free coffee everybody's so friendly and happy uh, you follow me then we go into the sanctuary 4,000 people, and this is after COVID, because everybody else was talking about, you know, nobody want to come to church after COVID, but this is after COVID, are you following me? And, and, and we go to the second service that they had, and the second service was 4,000 people in the second service, and they had, they had already had one at 9 a.m., and they were going to have another at 6 p.m., but we went to the one at 11 a.m., 4,000 people packing that place. And then, you know, we, we, they, you know uh, it started right on time at 11 a.m., and they had about 15 minutes of real wonderful praise and worship and things like that. Then the, uh, they had a couple of announcements, and then the minister preached the word of God. Then we had communion and things like that all in one hour. I said, oh, my God. Me and my wife says, church over already? You know what I mean? But then as we went there, we began to grab a hold of that. You know what? This is, this is the, new, the new. Because many times after COVID, a lot of people were not going to stay in service no more for two or three hours at a time, you know, with all the different announcements and, and delays and honoring this person, honoring that person. And God put on my heart, he said, trim the fat. <laughs> you follow me? What you need to do is trim the fat because a lot of things people are doing that they think is what's causing the churches to grow is not really what's causing the churches to grow. He said, trim the fat. One hour church. And, and so God began to put in my heart, go back to Phoenix now and start a church, call it one hour church. And my wife and I, we started teasing each other. Let's go to our one hour church. So this is here in Las Vegas. Let's go to our one hour church today. Are you following me? And, and so we started going there and God began to speak in my heart. He says, that's the model I want you to take back to the state of Arizona. That model is what I want you to do is that one hour church where you do praise and worship. You do the word of God communion all in one hour. And that's when the assignment came to me because I was, you know, he said, I'm, don't do it like you did before because I had a ministry before. He said, take this right here because this is what drawn people in it. And this drew a multicultural, multiracial, multigenerational church. And so I said, oh God, that's good. And so then, again, so as I'm coming back to finish, these are the two different assignments. Number one is to have a church launch. Well, what we're looking to launch, but well, first of all, building a, team, a church launch team of people that will grab a hold to the specific vision and say, I, I, I see this, Dr. Craig, and I want to be a part of this. Praise God. I want you to, I want, I'm going to be a part of your training in these areas, and which I'll be doing it, you know, on, on a daily basis for you. But also, you know, I, 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 that, that one-hour church concept, I, I want to see that happen also. So, so that's what I'm after right now. I'm looking for people that say, Dr. Craig, I want to catch the vision. <laughs> You follow me? I want to catch the vision also. So again, the goal is 350 people. Uh, uh, you know, with, with all the locations we're going to have on the first Sunday uh, in January the seventh. You know, uh, and that is with the in Phoenix. Uh, South Phoenix, North, uh, South Phoenix, uh, West Phoenix, and then online church that we're going to have also for you that are around the world that want to be a part of this. But we, that's what they believe in God for in those areas. And so let me, let's look at this for a moment as we see this. Look at the book of Habakkuk because, you know, I like to always have, you know, biblical uh, 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 biblical uh, understanding of what I do because, I, you know, if I'm doing something, God show it to me in the Bible, are you following me? So what happens is, uh, God, look in the book of Habakkuk what it says. Habakkuk says this, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, 
make it plain upon the tables that he may run that reads it. You get that? So he's, God is telling us, you know, don't, don't just start something. He said, but get a vision and write it down. And that's what I'm sharing with you, what my vision is, and I'm sharing it with you so you can write it down on the, t God, the Holy Spirit then can write it down on the, on, the table, on the tablet of your mind and in your heart. And, and he said, write it down that he that read it can run with it. So I want you to be able to see this and, and be able to run with this vision, and I'm calling it catching the vision, that, that, that in the air right now, <laughs> hallelujah, is a church or churches that God is raising up. Are uh, you following me? And it's going to be launched January the 7th. Are uh, you following me? A one-hour service, which we're building up right now. You got that? And, and, and we're, we're trusting God for many of you that say, Dr. Craig, I'm with you. I want to catch this vision. I want to run with the vision with you in Jesus' name. So let's look at for a moment, because I'm going to take you a little, to a little parts of this during this week. Let's look at for a moment what is a vision? Because that's, that, that's very important, isn't it? You need to know what a vision is. Because a lot of people, you know, don't, don't understand what a vision is. And so we got to really get that in our spirit also. You know, well, what is a vision? This is so very important, isn't it? And so as we see this, a vision then, look at this one. This is my definition of a vision. A vision is a revelation of what God wants to do, to, uh, what God wants to accomplish in reaching certain people at a particular point in the future, this is now, as a result of his church being faithfully planted. You got that? Faithfully planted it. So that's our goal right now is to actually, you know, uh, get the same revelation that God has given me into many of you. Because just joining a church really doesn't happen because you just may join because of the pastor or, you know, you need something, you know, you just want to go to church on Sunday mornings. But what I want you to do is not just that. I want you to actually literally get a revelation of this in your spirit. Are you following me? And that this is something that God, not just Apostle Craig, but this is something that God wants to accomplish. Are you following me? Uh, and, and, uh, to meet people that are out there that are hungry for this. You follow me? And this church being faithfully planted is, is the answer from God to meet their needs in Jesus name. So this vision then, it, it, it begins with an intense burden, number one, owned by the church planter, which is me, I'm an apostle of God, called the plant churches, but it is affirmed by key individuals that declare God also called us to do it. You follow me? So it's not just something that the, that the minister has, but it's something that the individuals also have that say, you know what, what the vision that God gave to Apostle Craig, I sense the calling from God to join that vision because that's what makes it happen. We got that? And we can see an example of this in the book of Acts when Apostle Paul was kind of moving into his next level of where God wants him to be, what was he wanting him to do because he had been in ministry for a while and he had went to one area and, and Holy Spirit said, no, not there. Went to another area, Holy Spirit says, not there. <laughs> you follow me? That's what I thought when I first came to Las Vegas. I thought, well, God, I was just coming to start a church in Las Vegas. But God said, no, not here. Not right. Maybe later on in Las Vegas, but no. And I kept saying, well, God, well, what do you want me to do? He said, just prepare yourself. And now I'm understanding that why he didn't want me to start a church then because I mean, he wanted to put my, in my heart these two items. Number one, a, a church, a one-hour church, and also the vision to plant 50 churches in Arizona. And I need to have the, the, the revelation from God to do that, which is so very important. So look, look here what happened with Apostle Paul here in the book of Acts, chapter number 10 and verse number 9. It says, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There, uh, it says, and there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. So you can see that Paul is not just going there just to start a church. He's going there uh, because there's what we call a Macedonian call of someone that says, I need your help. Are you following? So I believe that when God says I'm sending you to the state of Arizona, it's because somebody, whether it's members, you in the body of Christ, say, I, I need the help that Dr. Craig provide. Not saying that, that other people, good, some great pastors out there, but some of you that's been praying, you know what, I need help. Whether you are in, in, uh, in the body of Christ and you got a vision that you said, you know, I need someone with a revelation from God to, to connect with to, so that I can get the help I need, well, that's what it's all about. Paul is getting what I call a Masonian call, but the call is not just so he can have a great career, but he's saying that these people are saying that, um, that you know, we need help. So 
you, I, I want to build a team. I'm assigned to build a team to, for people that want to, that say what I have is going to help them. But not only that, it's a team effort. And look what they said there in verse number 10. It says, and after Paul has saw the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. So think about this. So, so the people did not see the vision. But because Paul was the visionary, he was an apostle with an assignment to establish churches. And so then God connects him with people that say the vision that God gave Apostle Paul, I sense a call from God to connect with that. And it said immediately, let's, let's look at that again, what he says there in, 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 in verse number uh, uh, 10. He says, and after he saw the vision, Paul saw that vision from God about the Macedonia, go help the people in Macedonia, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, uh, surely gathering the Lord called us to preach the gospel to them. So, so it wasn't just, I'm just joining the church, but they're saying, I sense a call from God to be a part of the vision that God gave Apostle Paul. So, so what I, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking for many of you today that will say, you know, Dr. Craig, I, I see what God has called you, with the vision God has given you as a call from God for me to participate in that. Because what happens is, you know, you know I'm going to be talking about how to, how, to, how to prepare yourself for that. Again, this is for people in the body of Christ that, that sense a, a, a call, you know, a, a need for someone with a vision like this. And, you, and, and you've been praying to God about this, but I've also trusted many of you that have said, you know what, I'm accepting what God, the vision God gave Apostle Craig as my call from God. I'm supposed to join with that. Are you following me? And that's what we're looking at. We're looking for uh, from the Lord right now in Jesus' name. So think about this. God is ready to provide his ability in response to your and my faith. Uh, but it is not based on our ability is based upon our availability to God. So, so we're not talking about, you know, you have, you, you have to be so, uh, so smart. It's just God, I'm looking for people that are available. <laughs> Amen. He went to Peter. Peter was just an old fisherman. He didn't have no ecclesiastical experience. Uh, you know, he didn't have no degree. He was a fisherman. But Jesus said, I'm going to make you an apostle of God. The, uh, uh, Matthew was a tax collector. Are uh, you following me? But Jesus says, no, I can use you. As an apostle of God, what I'm saying is that 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 I, 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 I'm putting the vision out here because I need many of you that 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 is, that is hearing this from God to say, you know what? I sense a call from God to connect with the vision Apostle Craig has. You know, whether you are a pastor and you've been praying about something like this, or whether you are people in the body of Christ and you've been praying about something like this for the next step. Well, this is. Uh, I'm bringing you the vision God gave me, and I'm looking for individuals that will accept this vision as a call from God to, to help me. Because the Bible said immediately we said we're going to Macedonia, that the Lord has called us to do it. So, so I, want, I want many of you that are sensitive this because once we get going, we believe in God to double every year and by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So we're not going to be doubling because we got good marketing experience. Which thank God for good marketing. But we're not going to be doubling because we got good marketing experience. We're going to be doubling because we got a call from God to do this. Are you following those areas? And, and so vision then, vision is, is not general. So we're not talking about just something, you know, generality, uh, but a vision is very specific. That's what God spoke in my heart. Go plant 50 churches. Very specific. Are you following me? And then literally, as I made sure what you laid on, I actually looked, I did some demographic study, and I saw all the different zip codes that I'm going to be going into and planting churches in the, throughout Arizona. 50 different zip codes already that, I've, that I've, I've, God has given me said, plant one here, plant one there, because these are the artists I want you to reach. Plant one here. And so I've got 50 locations already in place. That, you know, in those areas. And so that's what I said. We're, we're, we're going to be about our fathers. But this is not just having churches always. It's a moment. I love good having good churches. And nothing wrong with that. But we're, but we're very specific on the assignment that God has given to us. You got that in very area. So, so this is now. So a vision then is not created. For a vision already exists in the heart of God. Therefore, this is now. Therefore, it is discovered as God reveals it to the listener. So we're not talking about creating a vision here because the because vision is in the heart of God that he trusts an individual with that particular vision. And then uh, uh, he, you and I discover it. You got that as God reveals it to us. That's what I'm saying. For many of you that have said, Dr. Craig, 
I, I, as I'm, I, I'm, I'm listening to you all this week, I sense the Holy Spirit saying, I want to connect with you. Because like I said, in pastors, there's many of you that are out there in those areas. Many of you said, Dr. Craig, I'm, you know, uh, you know I, I got my own ministry, but I would have to connect with you on, on another level as far as maybe an affiliate or whatever there. That's okay, too, because, you know, I, I'm, I'm an apostle to the nation, so the, to the people of God. But I'm also looking for people that will specifically connect with me in this one-hour church launch. Are you following me? That you can sense this one-hour church, which I'll be talking to you about that later on, too, about how God gave that to me in more specific, uh, specific things. So I'm looking for individuals that are going to have to connect with me as a one-hour church uh, team member as we get these 50 churches started here in, in the state of Arizona. And so uh, point number two is this, about what is a vision, that vision is a divine, listen now, vision is a divine di uh, I think I put that in my notes here. So, yeah, here we go. Uh, vision is there. Is, it is a divine directive that seeks human availability to bring it to pass. Again, it is a divine directive that seeks human availability to bring it to pass. So as we talk about vision, you say, all right, we got a vision. God's got it, but he, but he, but he seeks human availability. So that's what I'm saying. So it, it, don't, it don't just happen. It don't just pop out of the sky. <laughs> You follow me? But a vision seeks human availability in those areas. And so Jesus, look at this now, therefore Jesus taught his disciples with great expectation, and he, gave, he said, this is the end result I want fulfilled in that area. And so he, but he also prepared them to expect greater miracles than he, what he performed. So he, so he said, you know, right, that I'm, he said, that he, Jesus is coming, he came as an apostle. He said he's an apostle of our confession. But he said that he then told him that what you saw me do, I want you to do greater. So I believe that what God has given me an assignment, that you're going to do greater than me, but I'm, 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 I'm this kind of like a launching of this kind of a vision. But many of you are going to grow and develop, and whether you be in business or whether you be in ministry, you're going to grow and develop even more powerful in that area in Jesus' name. See, look at the book of St. John for a moment in chapter number 14 and verse number 12 of the book of John. And look what Jesus told the disciples. He said, Verily, verily, <clears throat> I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. So we're talking about, you know, you know, doing the works of Jesus. We're talking about getting involved in a vision that's not just having church. Are you following me? Uh, a, a, a vision that is not just having church. A vision that's not just, you know, going to one anniversary to the next anniversary. But we're talking about a vision where we're actually doing the works of Jesus Christ. As an apostle, I fully expect a super, supernatural church. I fully expect people to see miracles and signs and wonders as God launches us into this Phoenix area in, in, in full force in Jesus' name. And so when you're coming, uh, I, that's why I'm believing God for you that are gifted, for you that were sisters of call from God. Therefore, we can expect the works of Jesus to manifest in, the, in, in, in these areas. Notice he said in verse 13 and 14, he said, and whatsoever you will ask the Father in my name, that will I do. Isn't that blessed? That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14, he says, And if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. You know what he's saying? That, that, that I'm going to be with you, and the same works as if I was there in Phoenix, Arizona, establishing a one-hour church, <laughs> you follow me, establishing 50 churches. He says that you're going to do those works as if I myself was there doing them. Are you following me? So we got a we got a way we got a reason to expect Jesus to manifest Himself as we go there in His name. We got a right to expect the Holy Spirit to move mightily and powerfully in that area. And like I said, my first you know, I, 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 I spent a lot of years in Arizona already, and we was able to establish oh my God multiple churches there in Arizona. We was able to train over two thousand students that's, that's already spread throughout Arizona. Are you following? Me? And we saw God move mightily then. But Jesus says, think this about this next move of God that's happening in, 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 the, in the area for what he's going to be doing, we can expect even greater miracles, he says, because we're going to do it in the name of Jesus. So that's why I'm, I'm looking for many of you that are, that'll say, Dr. Craig, I'm on. I'm in. Again, if you are a pastor, <clears throat> and you just may want to just be an affiliate, but if you are a pastor, say, you know what? I believe that <clears throat> even though I've been doing some things with my, in my own a vision and assignment, I really sense that God is speaking to my heart to join with you as a one-hour church pastor. 
and that may be you. You may want to be trained in the area <clears throat> because, like I said, you know, uh, there will be affiliates that you'll keep your own vision, but I'm looking also for individuals that want to be trained, want to be a part of the one-hour church family and, and, and a part of my team, and you may be one of the churches that we're going to establish those churches throughout the 50, those 50 churches throughout Arizona. But these churches are, are, are not just affiliate churches, which is good too, but these are a team member that's actually said, Pastor, I want to bring my church totally under your church and, and, and become actually a one-hour church pastor. I'm open to those kind of pastors also in those areas. And still work with other pastors that maybe say, God, God ain't told me to do this, but I'm, I'm speaking, I'm, I believe God put in people's heart that, you know what, I need to change. Because, you know, my, my ministry has changed. Somebody, somebody, sometimes people say, I don't want my ministry to change. You know, my ministry has changed names uh, for several times. I started off with a church called Life Tabernacle back in 1976. And then I changed to Azusa. And now then we changed to I Am. And then God said, now take the ministry now to One Hour Church. So, so it's nothing wrong with that in those areas. It's just for the revelations. That's what God's doing in your life. So what I'm saying is, so you may be a pastor that says, I'm open to this. And, and you, uh, you know, I want to talk to you about this, Dr. Craig. So I'm open to that also. Just message me and we'll get together. But then also, also those that are members. And you said, Dr. Craig, uh, I'm in the body of Christ, but I sense a need to, to you know, but God leading me in a different direction and, 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 and to connect with someone. And you may be, <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm trusting the Holy Spirit and the angels of God to touch your heart during this week as I talk about this, and that you say, I, I, the vision that, you, that God's given me, Dr. Craig, I want to connect with that vision. I believe that God is putting this in my heart, that God is calling me, not just me joining you, but God is calling me to connect with you as a team member to see this thing happen. If that's you doing this week, I'll be, I'll be giving you a, a link to, to register with. You know, probably I'll have it together by tomorrow and things like that. And then when I come to finish, I want to be able to have a, a luncheon with you all. You know what I mean? Where you can get to cancer. No means we connect together you know, in a luncheon together because I really want you to connect with me. You know, not just some distant person, but I want you to connect, you know, to get my heart and see, and see the presence of God that's, that he's assigned on my life and my wife's life and things like that. So we're going to be having a, you know, a, a luncheon together and things like that and doing this time. Because we're going to be doing this, we're going to be preparing for this uh, from now on to January the 7th. And so it would be a good thing if you said, Dr. Craig, I'm in. I, I want to connect. Amen. In Jesus' name. And so I'm, I'm expecting you in those areas. So before, before we leave, so I'm, I'm going to be coming back on tomorrow at the same time uh, uh, at 8 a.m. Because, I, I, again, I want to be able to you know, share this even further with you. But before we do again, you know, as I said, you know, we're believing God. This is what I do full time. And so I, I want to trust God for many of you that are saying you're my partners. That you said, Dr. Craig, I want to also connect with you financially. Because, you know, when God calls a minister like myself, he don't, you know, I was a hairdresser for 20 years. So being a hairdresser, you know what I mean, God put me away from that business to be in full-time ministry. So I need many of you to connect with me on a financial basis. Like if, I'm a, if God put this in your heart, when God asked for an offering, when the children of Israel, he said, everybody whose heart stirs them up to do it. So I, so I want many of you to get your heart and your finances with this also, God, you see. And so what God said in the book of Malachi, he says this, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. He said that there may be meat in my house and prove me now here with the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there should not be room enough to receive it all. And then in verse 11, he says that I will rebuke the devourer for your sake and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. So we can see that that God is about not only you, you know, uh, 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 you know, stepping in here with your feet, but also stepping in with your finances. You follow me? Because that's a part of what God is doing. And so, you know, uh, for you that God is calling in this area, like I said, you know, you that just said, Dr. Craig, what you're teaching on, I'm already, you, you're just not starting to teach, but I'm already sensing the, a calling. I'm already sensing a drawing to what you're saying. Then I want you to begin right now to connect with me both like I said, by tomorrow I have a link for you to connect with me on. We're going to have a lunch in there in Phoenix also to begin to connect. You can connect with me in fellowship and relationship and things like that. Because, we, because December the 7th, I mean January the 7th, is going down, praise God. So, again, right there on Facebook or wherever you, wherever you are right now, you can actually, there's a link right there where you can, you can give there. Uh, and uh, and, uh, and where, where it says One Hour Church, you click that link right there. It'll take you right to our giving area. So you can click right there with your tithe, your offering. And God said, I'll rebuke you to bow for your sake. You can also connect through Zelle at IM Ministries. That Zelle, just go right to Zelle. It goes right into the account, ministry account. 
I Am Ministries, and also the Cash App. You can click with the Cash App at Dollar Sign Apostle I Am. Dollar Sign Apostle, right there, just, just right there on Facebook. You can do that right there. And then also the QR code that's right there. You can actually connect on that QR code. Just put the, the phone to the QR code. It'll actually take it right to our giving area also because I'm believing God. I believe in God for people that say, Dr. Craig, I'm with you. And the moment you start connecting with me on, 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 and you're planting your seed into this ministry, your church, your ministry, your business is going to leap forward because you're connecting with something that God is doing in that area, an assignment that God has. So as you begin to tithe, you follow me? I'm not talking about tipping. I'm talking about somebody that's really sincere with your heart. Uh, you forgot God told the children of Israel, he said, Moses, Moses tell people whoever's heart stirs them up. In other words, don't, don't you know, bring it. And that, and that way, they're, and they're willing. He said, those are the ones I want to, to connect with you to help support this. So I'm saying, if you're sensitive to this in your heart, that God wants you to connect, then I, and, and, and God's still in your heart in this area, then I want you to start tithing. You know, because like I said, you know, we want to get your heart and your money in, in the right place so that the blessing and the favor of God, God said, I'll be beautifully divine for your sake because whatever's been, this may be the step you've needed to take. In, your, in the area of finances, that's going to cause your finances to leap forward because you're connecting them with this level of anointing. Are you following with an assignment God's given to a whole state? So, uh, so I want you to do that right now. But tomorrow, I'm coming back with you again on part two of this. And I, I'll be with you all week, Monday through Friday, sharing this vision. And I'm, I'm praising God for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those that you have already started connecting to this assignment. For, for this one-hour church to, to the 50 churches in the state of Arizona. I pray for them. I'm praying for them right now, Father, for their families. I'm praying for their ministries. I'm praying for their, their finances already, God, that they'll begin to sense the supernatural anointing of God on this situation, and they're going to see you move in a way that they've never seen you move before because, God, they're connecting with a vision and assignment that you have ordained for the state of Arizona. So, God, we thank you for them, and I bless them right now, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, until tomorrow at the same time, 8 o'clock a.m. tomorrow at the same time, this has been Apostle Alfred Craig saying, may God's riches and his very best be yours. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye now.